So welcome to my games of the year. Yes, I picked my game of the year. I made another video about it before this one. And this is where I get to talk about all the rest of the games that came out this year that I absolutely adored and I really, really enjoyed. I mean, I honestly was going into 2021 thinking, is there really gonna be enough games this year? Is there gonna be a lot of stuff because of what's happened in the last few years? And there was a ton, I couldn't keep up. It was crazy, even to the end of the year here. It's been absolutely ridiculous. So we'll start off and I'll ask you, what are some of your games of the year? Let me know down below so we can try out some other games that we might have missed. It happens, it easily happens with this many games that are coming out. So we start off with Near Replicants and I played that earlier in the year. I did an entire review, first thoughts on the game and I really, really liked it. It's a kind of a reimagining of the Japanese version that never came out over here. And I got a chance to play it and I loved it. And I think why I like it is the music is really good, but uh, there's an emotional storyline there. I love the 2D, kind of 3D that they had going on. I really love the art style that was implemented and I thought it was really well done along with the action RPG mechanics of it all. It really came together for me, and I really enjoyed watching my friend Pete Dorr back in the day play the original Nier, and I watched him stream it all the time, and I got to experience it myself, and I got to really play it uh, myself this time, and I really had a great amount of fun playing Nier Replicant. I highly recommend that game. And it's one of those ones that I think will become a cult classic over time. Now we got to jump back into the world of survival horror this year, and I couldn't be more thrilled. I remember thinking, oh my God, there's two weeks till another mainline Resident Evil game comes out, another Biohazard game comes out. I couldn't be more thrilled because Resident Evil Village came out. Did it live up to the hype? Oh, I, I, I did a bunch of videos about that, uh, talking about my first thoughts and then our final review I did with Rob. And we talked all in depth about it. And what do I like? I love the European Gothic setting. I, it was like one of the first kind of games I was playing on the PS5, you know, in that early kind of launchy time. And I loved playing it. I, I thought the graphics were really fantastic. I love the, the monsters in there and what they're kind of doing, kind of shaking up the series. Kind of reminded me a lot of 4. And I really like 4. I know my friend Rob doesn't like 4 so much. I love 4. So 8 was really good to get into. What I really want to say about 8, without any spoilers, was the storyline. That's the thing when I think back to Resident Evil 8 now, uh, Village, I think back to the storyline and kind of where it takes you. I kind of get a little bit shivers thinking about it because it's so weird and strange and I don't want to delve into it. I've talked about it in my spoiler review and stuff like that. Go in there and check that out. Uh, but I really, really am excited about where they go next and I I gotta say, I love the gameplay, I love the setting, everything was working for me, and I really just loved playing another Resident Evil game, and it lived up to the hype. Now, an unexpected game that I never thought would come out again, because I played the PS2 version back in the day, was Shimogami Tensei 3 Nocturne. They came out with a remaster for the PS4 and the Nintendo Switch. We played the PS4 version, and it was the first uh, mainline Shin Megami Tensei game that Kim really played through. And uh, I think she did Strange Journey as well, but she played through Nocturne and she really liked it. It's, it is an older style of game, know that going in, but I really liked the remaster that they did. And I was like, wow, so many new players get to play this game that I played back on the PS2 version. And that game was such an underground cult game. Nobody even knew what it was when it first came out. It was like, Shin Megami Tensei, what, what is that? And I was like, hey, I, you know, I, I played the Persona games at that time on the PS1. So I was kind of like, I was kind of in that world. So I was quite happy to see that dark style of game finally coming out over here. And I, I really enjoyed it. And it's really good to go through the game again with this remaster. Uh, I think if you like Persona uh, or the Shin Megami Tensei series in general, it's a great game to jump into. And we got a small update to Final Fantasy VII Remake. Uh, we got Integrate this year. And playing that side game was something that I really, really enjoyed because my God, I will say this. On the PS5, with the upgrade they did, the graphics were stunning. And I was playing this side game going, I can't believe what I'm seeing. And I, I think I even said it reminded me of the old days of video games when you would see a game and it would just, you'd be shocked. You'd be shocked. This Integrate shocked me how beautiful it looked. I was like, wow. And I, it was not a long game uh, to play through uh, the side mission, but it was a lot of fun playing with the characters and running around this world. And 
I can't wait to Final Fantasy VII Remake Part Two comes out. I can't wait. I, I love these upgrades and stuff like that. I love being able to jump back in. But I was really having a great time and having a great time on the PS5. I mean, it was really a lot of fun and just to see what they were able to do. I mean, it's a remarkable looking game and you know what? It's a hell of a lot of fun playing that combat engine. Another game that shocked me this year and made me a believer because I... It's not that I haven't been a believer in the past. I've never really gotten into the series until this game. Ratchet and Clank this year on the PS5 blew me away. Dare I say, use an old uh, saying, it blew my socks off. It did. It really did. I'm being funny with that one. But I remember when I first started playing the game and I'm like, oh yeah, this is a really good cinema I'm looking. And I'm like, whoa, this is not a cinema. This is the game. I was like, what? I was controlling the character. I thought it was still in a cinema. And I'm like, We've gotten to that point, folks. I'm like, we're, we're there, we're there. And it was really exciting. And I, the kinetic energy of Ratchet and Clank was so great on the PS5. And I was so marveled. Yes, there's a lot of cinemas. Yeah, that, that's an argument to be had. There's a lot of cinemas, but when you get into the gameplay, it is so much fun running around that world. And it's cutesy, it's cartoony, and it's so highly detailed. And the boss encounters, like just really blow you away. I mean. That's the one game graphically this year that it really shocked me and it really was showing me the power of the PS5 and I love the haptic controller. That was awesome. I mean, if you haven't tried the haptic controller on the PS5, please go to a friend's place or something like that and try it out. It'll make you a believer. I love that controller, but I can't say enough great stuff about Ratchet and Clank. Now, here we go. This is an easy choice. God, I've done that joke so much over the years and I gotta stop. I think maybe that'll be the end of it. Ease 9 Monstrum Knox came out this year, and was it good? Yeah, it was really good. It was really good. I mean, when I first played the Japanese version, I was playing through it and I thought, these graphics are okay. I was in the city a little bit and I was like, I hadn't really explored because, you know, I could only get so far in the Japanese version, but I liked what I was playing. I thought it was good. But when you play the actual full game as I did and go all the way through it right to the end, it is awesome because you get these party members and they all have different abilities and you can use the different abilities to traverse the entire city. And yes, you get out of the city. It's not all in the city. And there's a lot to explore. And I really like the story. I really love the gameplay. And that's what elevates this game. Is it the best ease game ever? No. Is it a really good ease game? Top five? Absolutely. Is it one that I recommend? Yes. Do you need to play past ease games to play this one? No. You can just jump right in and play it right away. I highly recommend it. It's an action RPG. Pretty okay graphics. They get a little bit better later on in the game. I really like this game and I really um, look forward to playing it again in the future. And there's a PS5 update. And it's nice. It looks really, really good. Okay, the next game I'm going to talk about, people will be like, what? This is a game of the year? Yes, it's a visual novel. It is Famicom Detective Club by Nintendo. A game based on an old Famicom game in Japan that we never got over here. I would have loved to have got that on the NES back in the day. But why does this game stand out? Why is it a game of the year? I like visual novels and I really, really enjoy playing this with my wife. We, we've sat for a bunch of days playing it and there's some twists and turns and it goes a really cool direction and it's, it's a detective story. You're trying to figure out who you are, what you're doing there, how it ties into the rest of the game. There's a lot going on there and I don't want to ruin too much about it because if I talk about it a lot, yes, it's a lot about clicking different menus. That's what it's all about. I understand that. But if you like choose your own adventure books or anything like that, you can really get lost in this adventure. And we did, and we really, really enjoyed it quite a bit. And it's, it's a game of the year. I really wish we got a physical copy of this game this year because I really enjoyed it. I love the music, it really stood out to me. Okay, this is a great one. This is one that I'm so happy, it's the year 2021. And we are still getting side view shooters. I'm so happy to get that. You know, people call them schmops, I call them side view shooters. We got R-Type Final 2. I couldn't believe we got this game. I was so happy it came out and I'm playing it and I'm like, 
I can't believe I'm playing R-Type still in the year 2021. I've said that R-Type is one of my favorite shooters of all time. It's up there. It's a pure classic. And I remember when R-Type Final came out, I thought, is that, this is it? There's no more R-Types. No, 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 of course not. We got R-Type Final 2. And what I like is the 2D, 3D that is going on here is really well done. The graphics are outstanding. The gameplay is there. It is challenging. It is fun. It's great getting power-ups and working your way through the levels. And let me say, it is difficult. It is difficult in the most best way possible because it's supposed to be difficult. It's supposed to be. You're supposed to go through the level, die and go, what did I learn there? What did I, yeah, don't go up there. Don't get trapped down there and do it again. And that's the one thing about the game. I kept going through it and every time I went through it, I got better and better and better at it. And that's what I recommend. So it's one of those games with a, a steep learning curve, but once you get there, you understand it and you feel very fulfilled at the end of the day. R-Type Final 2, excellent game. Okay, this is a cheat. This is a bit of a cheat because it's a game from uh, a bunch of years ago, but we finally got it back today on modern consoles. It wasn't canceled, it's back. Scott Pilgrim vs. The World, a 2D action RPG beat em up style of game based on the Scott Pilgrim uh, comic and movie. And how is this game? It's a blast from the past. I love games like this. They're not for everybody, but I love playing two player with my wife, going around, living in this world. It's so much fun. And I couldn't believe that we finally got Scott Pilgrim once again. And what I want to say about 2021 is the variety of games that I played was so varied and different. I played visual novels, beat-em-ups from the past, you know, first-person shooters, everything. There was so many great different style of games this year, and that works into my next game, Forza 5. This game blew me away. I love this game so much. The Forza 4 is one of my favorites, and it's become one of my favorite racing franchises of all time, even surpassing Ridge Racer for me. I love Forza. The level designs are beyond stunning. Just racing around in the world, you're going, what? Really? Look at this stuff. The raining effects, you know, the, the sandstorms that come in, just the weather effects in general, the attention to detail, the world building, the racing, everything feels so good. The arcade style of racing for me is what sucks me into this game. And I, do you know what I do? I don't even do missions. I just pick a thing on the map and I drive there. And I just race past all my friends, you know, buzzing past me. And I have a great amount of fun playing it. And I highly recommend Forza 5. Okay, this was nearly my game of the year. It's up there. It's in my top, probably top three games of the year. And Tales of Arise. I'm just gonna say it, Tales of Arise, the RPG that kind of came out of nowhere. We kind of thought it was gonna be good. We had no idea it would be this good. And it's an excellent RPG, one that I highly recommend. I have friends of mine that said to me, yeah, they thought they were getting out of video games. They were getting bored by video games. There was not enough games that they liked. They played Tales of Arise and it brought it all back for them brought it all back for them. I was so happy to hear that because for us, uh, me and Kim playing Tales of Arise this year, we're like, we can't wait. We were playing in the review time and we're like, we can't wait for everybody to play this. This is remarkable. And it's perfect because it's about the story. It's about the characters. It's about the world building there, the different environments. It's about the combat, that combat rushing in and out, the explosions of it all, the boss encounters. I could go on and on and on. Tales of Arise is a perfect RPG. It's up there. It's like a 9 out of 10 for sure. A game I got to play with my best friend Rob this year was Metroid Dread. And we had a blast. Oh my god. We were screaming. We were laughing. All the emotions that you get from a Metroid game were there. Is it a difficult game? Yes. Is it a great game? Yes. It's a challenging game for sure, but the more you play it, the more you get at it, the more you learn. The boss encounters, I mean, you just gotta keep on getting through those. Uh, they're challenging, but they're so rewarding. And we're building on Metroid and the storyline of what's gone in the past. And we kind of end in a really kind of interesting way in this one. And me and Rob, it was the first time we got to play a Metroid game together over the years. And we sat for a couple of days and went through it and we're like, Oh my God, what a fulfilling experience. It's one of those moments that we're not gonna forget. We're always gonna say, hey, remember that time we played Metroid Dread? My God, you know, that was awesome. And so we have that memory and it lived up to the hype, didn't it? It did, Metroid Dread lived up to the hype. And the next game I've gotta mention is Super Mario World Bowser's Fury. Yes, it's an old game with a brand new add-on. And let me say something, the brand new add-on is amazing. I wanna see a full 3D Mario World just like this, like 
This game showed me where the future of Mario games can really go. And the one thing I want to say is what I originally said about the game. It's got the most beautiful flow to it. You're just flowing from one section to the next. It just feels so easy to get into. It doesn't matter what style of player you're at. You're going to jump in, feel at home. And Nintendo knocked it out of the park with this one. I mean, Nintendo didn't have a lot of games this year, but some of the ones that they did come out with were beautiful. And this game looks gorgeous. It's got that Mario feeling to it, which we all love, but it had such wonderful gameplay. And it kind of showed you an open world style of Mario game. And I can't wait to see where they take it next. Now, my next game of the year was not even on my radar. I saw it and I was like, no, I don't think so. And then some friends were talking to me and saying, no, it's not what you think. You gotta try it out. This is a, a game of the year. And I'm like, really? I'm like, this? Guardians of the Galaxy? Really? I was like, nope. Because I was like, I wanted to see the, you know, the actors from the movies in the games and we weren't getting that. So that's what was a huge turn off. And I was like, I like Guardians of the Galaxy, but I don't think I want to play a video game of it. Boy, was I wrong. I mean, the Marvel you know, Cosmic Universe is very, very interesting. And the thing that they've done here is, yes, the characters are different, but they fit and they work. And it's kind of like this alternate kind of timeline thing for me in my mind. And I just kind of went with it. The characters are good. The humor is good. The world building is really good. The combat is fun. And it's just one of those games that you kind of get lost in. And it's one of those games that I'm going to play over the winter break because I'm only a certain amount of time in, but I love it. I'm really enjoying it. And I really want to mention it because I think it's one of those games that everybody's passing over. I mean, you probably get it cheap after Christmas for sure, but one of those ones to not pass up. Now, how could I not mention this? I'm a huge Halo fan. So Halo Infinite got released this year. How is that? I can't stop playing it. I play it all the time with my friends. We love it. It's so much fun going around, you know, killing your friends online. And I haven't played an online shooter for a while. And uh, am I the best Halo player? Absolutely not. But do I have a fun time playing it? Playing it? Absolutely. And Halo is a lot of fun. The new Infinite is excellent. I mean, for sure, we got the one player mode going on there, but we have the, you know, the online mode. And I, let me say something. I don't do any of the microtransactions or any of that stuff. I just go in with my friends, we pick a map, we get our weapons, and we shoot each other. We don't do anything else. We don't need anything else. We're happy with what we have here. And it's remarkable, I'll be honest with you. I was kind of like waning on Halo. I've been a huge Halo fan my whole life. And we got to five and I was like, I'm out. I was done with Halo. And I've had a few years to have a break from Halo. I think that also helped. And so playing Infinite, I'm back, man. Like it used to be in the olden days of Halo. It feels like the original. And that's what I'm really enjoying. And all of my friends are loving the game. We're all having a blast together. And Halo Infinite is an excellent, excellent game. Next, it's my last game I'm gonna mention of the year, and it's a game from last year. Ghost of Tsushima, the director's cut. I picked it back up, and I had one of the best weeks of my entire life playing that game. It's one of those games that I kind of was like, yeah, I'll start playing it. I got suckered back in, and I just fell in love with this game. It's on, honestly like a PlayStation game of the decade. They did such an amazing job with the world building here. And they did such a great job of capturing Japan, feudal Japan at this time. I can't believe it. It's like a historical document that you're playing and you're living in this world with the samurai and the gameplay and the brutalness of it all. I loved it. I loved it. I, and what I liked is it doesn't hold your hand. You can just jump on your horse and you go south. And that's what I did. I was like, I'm going south. And as I went south, the game still would pick me back up into the storyline and weave me back into the overall narrative of the world. And the gameplay was amazing. The standoffs and all the stands and things that you you know learn in the game were remarkable. I couldn't believe the level of detail in this game. Even when I finished the game, the game opens up and there's so much more you can do. And I was like, whoa. This game is big and and I often say this, I can say it with this game, and I'm not a religious person, but this game is a religious experience. It's one that you need to experience. And I, I played on a PS4 and I thought it was amazing, but following the wind into the PS5 version blew my mind, man. I mean, I mean, Ghost of Tsushima is an incredible game and one that I will go back to and do some more missions in and all that. So. There's a lot of games to go through there. I only could mention a certain amount of games that really stood out. There's a lot of other games that I really enjoyed. I just couldn't put in the video 
or the video would be five hours long. But I will ask you guys, what is your games of the year? Let me know down below. 2021 was incredible, wasn't it? It really, really was. So anyways, guys, until next time.